four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Woo! Welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me to celebrate today is Court Winsett. <laughs> that was my party horn. <laughs> Opening bell, maybe? <laughs> okay, friends. So we are here. It is New Year's Eve, and we just wanted to drop a little episode for you because we didn't want you to miss us. You can't go into the new year without hearing from us, right? I, I, I mean, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna side with you, Katie, and say that no, they can't. They absolutely can't. I mean, their 2021 would not be fulfilled without hearing well wishes from Katie and Court, right? Well, yeah, 2020 would not be ended properly. If they were not, because today is New Year's Eve. Yes. So is. tonight will be the start of a new year. Tonight will be when all goes right with the world. Tonight will be when everything that you have ever hoped for is perfect. We know this from experience, right, Katie? Oh, New Year's Eve expectations are so insanely high. I am guilty of this. I feel like every year I build it up. It's going to be this. It's, you know, get the perfect outfit, have the perfect plans. Change it up. It's going to be fantastic. Rarely is it ever what you want. Rarely. Absolutely. Listen, I uh, celebrated uh, many, many, many New Year's Eves in my time. And I could probably count on one hand the times that I really thought that when I woke up the next morning and thought to myself, wow, that was a night to remember. Uh, I mean, you know, it just it just never happens that that things go as well as you think they're going to. And I mean, I, you know, we're guilty of going into New Year's Eve thinking that the, things are going to go great. Oh, yeah. It's, having it's high built expectations. Up. Yeah. yeah. It's just going to be this magical night and midnight's going to hit and you're going to, you know, kiss somebody or you're just going to be surrounded by your best friends and start the new year and it's a whole new year, new me. Mm-hmm. Well, you're you're the same you, or you may be a hungover you the next day, or yeah. mad because that dress you spent all that money on, someone else showed up in the exact same dress. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we did, we covered New Year's resolutions. Oh and, yeah, and, and a, the impact it has. Yeah, resolutions was a, a couple of episodes ago. So this one's just kind of a short little fluff piece for y'all, uh, just to kind of get you by until our next episode. Uh, but we wanted to, we wanted to come out with something, we wanted to discuss something. So we thought about talking about sort of the false expectation of huge life changes happening Mm -hmm. on New Year's Eve. And the fact that really, if you think about it, some of your biggest decisions ever, your most life changing decisions ever probably happened on a Tuesday in, I don't know, what's a boring month? September. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, No, September is beautiful. Let's say, (laughs) say August. August is a. Yeah. Yeah. I got married in August. So, so you like August? I like August. Okay, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I guess. So I don't know. We'll come up with another month. I don't know. I'm not particularly a fan of of March or um, May. Really, pretty much any of the M months are are you can take them. I I don't want them. So. Okay. So so as we're ranting about months, what we're talking about <laughs> is how New Year's builds this whole thing of something magical is going to happen, but mm. really. Life-changing things happen every day on a random time. And so think about some things that have changed your life. Yes. Consider for a moment, if you will, the fact that the biggest things that have happened in your life, the single event that that changed the absolute course, uh, the, the, the direction of your life, yeah, you're, happened, you're at the fork in the road. So it happened just on some random day. It, mm-hmm. You can't plan for it. It never is just. It never is just like okay tonight. I'm gonna change my life, and you do. Mm-hmm. That just is not the way these things turn out. So, just as a little short today, we wanted to talk about a single day in our lives that if it had not, if if we had not chosen the way we did, our lives would be completely different. And so we're gonna. Try not to tear up. <laughs> Try not to get too deep. Hold but, it together. Yeah, hold it together. But, uh, you know, just as a little fun exercise. And you do the same. Consider what days in your life, not New Year's Eve. Don't don't hang everything mm-hmm. on making changes on New Year's Eve. Don't hang everything on 2021 or 2022 or whatever year being yeah. a, a, the, the next best thing. No. What, what, what decisions can you pinpoint that uh, 
you're happy you made it because it absolutely changed your your life for the better or you wish you had not made it because if you hadn't who knows your life may be way better right now not to get too dark but yeah and they're not always big things like just think about a simple of like the butterfly effect right yeah if you had decided to sit at home and binge netflix instead of going to the bar would Mm -hmm. you have missed meeting your best friend or your future spouse Mm -hmm. and So think about that. It's not this big, gigantic decision you had to make. One I can think about with me, and I've I've often said this, is that when, you know, I was a senior in high school and was trying to decide where I was going to go to school. Mm -hmm. And I had really determined, you know, I'm going to go to Ole Miss. Uh, I'm going to be like majority of my graduating class. I'm going to go. And I had a friend that had introduced me to MTSU and I went and visited it fell in love with it, loved it, and thought she was going with me. She didn't go with me, but so I went that path. Mm. I often think back to if I had gone to Ole Miss instead of MTSU, I think I would be a different person because I feel like, number one, got to add a little sappy moment here, uh, the guy I was dating, which was a jerk at the time, Mm. and I stayed with for another three years after that because, I don't know, because I went to MTSU, but he told me if I'd gone to Ole Miss that he would have broken up with me because he knew it was a party school. Oh. And I'm not saying Ole Miss is a party Should school. I'm not hating on it. <laughs> yes. So first off, one, if I'd gone to Ole Miss, probably would have gotten rid of that trash yep. that, you know, was stuck with me for three years. Take and, that you know, to the curb. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it would have been different because sorority life is very different at Ole Miss versus MTSU. I think sure. I would have probably gone down a little bit of a different path, but you never know. I could still end up where I am now, but I think that it would have been different if I had just made that simple change of which college I went to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So listen, mine is going to be kind of a weird one because there are so many branching points from this one moment, this one single moment that's so tiny, so minuscule, so non-mattering, but it made such a huge explosion of differences in my life just with one tiny little decision. Mm -hmm. High school. There's this guy I know of. I don't really know. (laughs) We don't really hang out. We don't really get along. I just know of him. I know that he plays in a band. I know that he's involved in theater. I also am involved in theater, but we don't hang in the same circles. We don't talk. We don't do anything, Mm -hmm. right? One day randomly, I think, I don't know why he, I I feel like it was him that came up to me. It may have been, may have been me that went up to him, but randomly one day in the middle of school around lunchtime, he, he came up to me or I went up to him and said, Hey, why don't we go out and hang out at the soccer field or whatever? Um, and, and I'm like, I don't know this guy. I don't know why on earth I would do this. I have <laughs> no reason to to believe that this will be any fun whatsoever. But sure, why not? And went and and hung out with him. So many things about that decision just absolutely changed the course of my life from the fact that I got way more involved in theater than I had been before, just simply by the fact that I knew him. Um, I met several of my friends, my other high school friends that I had because I met him. I met my wife. Oh, wow. Because he introduced us in high school. I mean, this guy played a pivotal role in so many different aspects of my life. And, you know, had I just been like, no, dude, I don't know you. I don't want to hang out with you. I'll (laughs) see you later. If I had just blown him off, which let's face it. I mean, you know me, you know what kind of grumpus I am. (laughs) I'm prone to just tell people, nah, not interested. If I had just blown him off and said, no, thanks, I think I'm going to go read a book in the library or something, then I, everything about my life would be different based on one day, one guy walking up to me and saying, hey, let's go hang. I mean, I think the message is that life is uncomfortable at times, and it's important to think about things as not just a, oh, this coworker of mine now wants me to go and hang out with them, or... I met this person and they've invited me to do something. It's kind of uncomfortable and sticky, but, you know, maybe I should take a chance. That's, you know, something my dad says all the time is you'll never regret that you didn't get enough sleep, but you will maybe regret if you miss out on an opportunity to go do something. And so I think it's one of those that life's short. If anything, this year has taught us, like, hold on to it, treasure those moments. And so 
when you've got that person who's asking you to come hang out, you know, think about it. Think of where this could lead you. Yeah, exactly. Just let me bounce off that. As the great philosopher one time said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Ferris Bueller. Absolutely. Amazing. But no, I mean, it's all true. It's one of those that, you know, this is New Year's Eve. You've got expectations for what you want to accomplish this year. But the thing is, is it's look at what you want to accomplish every day. Take those opportunities. Life's a little messy, but jump on those things that you can find that may be a new adventure, may lead you to a new friend. And I'm thinking now a lot of my really close friends are ones that happened very randomly. And it's because I chose to go meet a boy. I don't know who the boy is anymore. The boy's gone. But the girl that was kind of sassy that I crashed her party didn't realize I was crashing her party. Now her and I are best friends. Hmm. So it's just, you never know what's ahead for you. And so in this age where we're all binging Netflix and sitting at home and all up in our feelings, and I know it's hard for people to, you know, jump out of their comfort zone. Just think about it because you never know that next life changing moment. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope personally that you have a, a happy, happy New Year's tonight, that your New Year's Eve celebration is wonderful and that your new year meets all of your expectations and that all of your dreams come true and that all of your wishes come true. Just don't hope that they're going to do it tomorrow because it's probably <laughs> going to take a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, keep that hope alive. Keep that dream alive uh, and uh, go out and have fun. Have safe fun tonight. Katie, you want to say anything else? Happy New Year! Happy New Year! We have had so much fun with you guys in 2020. We cannot wait for 2021. We've got some fun stuff in store with this great new equipment and Cam being able to chime in. Say hey, Cam. What's up, guys? <laughs> so I hope everything is wonderful tonight and we love you guys. Yeah, have fun, but be safe. Buckle your seatbelt. Daddy Court's telling you to buckle. Yeah. Okay, so for now, ladies and gentlemen, I am Court. I'm Katie. And we are out. Mm-hmm.